It's Monday. That means it's time to continue with the rewrite of Game of Thrones. Welcome to the newest episode of SDW. Super Dario World! It's a me, Dario! Woohoo! So I made a decision, but uh, before I get into it, uh, let me just give you a quick reminder that you can find the podcast in the iHeartRadio app. Just type in the show percent, Super Dire World, find it right there. You can also find it at rock1053.com. Uh, just click on the podcast tab, or you can find it on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube as Super Dire World Podcast. Now, I loaded my very first video on, uh, on, on YouTube that showed me, and uh, I did some editing stuff, and... Uh, I was a test out. I, I I threw it out of the weekend to test it out. Last week, I did a whole bunch of editing, and I came to a decision. Uh, well, right now, the big decision is because I do want to continue doing it, but uh, since Comic-Con's coming up, for, I don't know, for for those of you who don't know, I will be doing a whole bunch of stuff, press stuff over there, and uh, from the stuff that, that they've thrown my way, I am about 100 episodes behind <laughs> of... TV shows that I need to watch or movies or stuff. So so I need to catch up on about 100 episodes of things, different shows, uh, different varieties, different networks. And there, I'm, prob- I'm probably going to get a few more. So I did the math. And last week, because I, I, I was playing around with stuff, it took me a little bit longer than it should have, like the editing the first episode. It's about a half hour episode. And so it took me about seven hours to do it. But part of it includes, you know, take, shaking the rust off from, from the software Part of it includes um, uh, testing some things out because I was doing it. I was halfway through and then somebody suggested something. I was like, you know what? I'll give it a shot. And uh, so I put it out there. I'm waiting for uh, I've been getting feedback and I really appreciate the feedback from everybody. If you want to contact me, you can always do it at Dario the Show on Instagram. So I like the feedback that you uh, most of the things that some people have liked are things that I like. The things that I disliked are things that I dislike. So I, it's kind of like I, I'm, I'm starting to shape it up a little bit based on that however um let's say it takes me two hours to do it that's two hours that i'm going to be taken away from episodes that i need to watch so i think i'm going to take a quick pause on that just mathematically it doesn't make any sense because i do need the time to catch up on a whole lot of tv which i know my life is so hard torture i know my it's so difficult i gotta gotta watch a whole bunch of tv no but i like being prepared so I'm, I'm, and honestly, I have no timeline on this. So I'm going to take a quick break on that. Um, I will catch up on most of them. This one, for example, this one, I'm not even considering making a video yet because the Game of Thrones ones are a little bit more complicated than the other ones. So I'm not even going to worry. So this week, I'm not even going to worry about that. Next week, definitely not going to, I'm not, I may not even do a podcast a few, a few of the days next week because I'm going to be. Like as soon as the show's done, I'm gonna be running out of here, heading over to the downtown for for the Comic Con stuff. So I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do, do it, but since I'm my own boss, I can do whatever I want, and I can do it on my own timeline. So just a quick heads up, I will be taking a quick quick pause on that while I catch up on everything else. Unfortunately, I'm 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 doing good. You know, they're asking me to do more things, and it takes up a little bit of my time. And since this is the one thing that I don't get paid for. I'm just doing it for fun. Well, it's like it has to go all the way to the back seat, all the way to the back seat. So, and for, <laughs> to clarify, for those of you who asked, uh, I did not have a podcast on Friday because all three of the studios, all three of the rock studios, they decided to work on them at the same time. So I couldn't use my studio, I couldn't use Emily's studio, and I couldn't use um, the the big studio to record anything or to do anything. So I pretty much I had to. I had to go with another board up and we trade around to see just to make sure that the timings for the station, everything were fine because you you can access the system through another computer here in the building. So it was just a huge pain. And uh, since they ripped off the carpet here, it my, my allergies were just killing me. So it was the point is it was not fun. It was not fun. But and that's why I didn't have it. It's not because I was too hungover. OK, all, all you people out there saying like, aha, you were super hungover. Or like, How did you party really hard? Actually, no, it was a pretty chill day. I went to the beach, hung out with my friends. It was a really great time. It was pretty chill. And since I was going to come back to the station to run the 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 big fireworks broadcast, I was like, oh, well, I can't really party too hard. And afterwards, I was done. You know how the beach really exhausts you sometimes? I don't know if it's being in the sun or walking in the sand or whatever. I don't know what it was, but I was exhausted. 
And I had to get up at 4 a.m. the next day. So I was like, you know what? I'll just take it pretty chill. Like, I've enjoyed my time. I had a few beers. It's okay. I'm good. I'm done. So I was actually, I was okay. I was just, I didn't have access to my studio. So I couldn't really do anything because they're finishing up here. And uh, I still don't like the way it looks. It's all white. And it makes me really uncomfortable. I don't like it. The The building looks weird. It looks almost clean. It looks like a hospital. And I don't like hospitals. I have a lot of issues with hospitals. The The... There was a moment when I learned that there's such a thing called super bacteria. Now, for those of you who don't know what a super bacteria is, imagine, I'm going to assume that you understand how evolution works. So if you kill off the weakest of something, then the strongest survive, and those are the ones that reproduce, and that's how you kind of evolve, right? In a way, that's that's survival of the fittest, and that could lead to evolution. Well, basically what happens is, you know how... Oh, a good example. You know how hand sanitizers say it kills 99.9% of germs? Well, that 0.1% of germs that survives is stronger than the rest of the fucking germs. And so if those keep reproducing, they'll become something known as a super bacteria. And so hospitals have that. Let's say they try to kill off a certain disease, but it's uh, they keep giving you antibiotics, antibiotics, but there's a point where they resist the antibiotics. And so they become super strong and it's a super bacteria. And the point is we don't have a cure for those. And the point is when I learned about those, they really freaked me out. And it's like, fuck going to hospitals, man. I don't want to go to the hospital because, I don't know, I have the flu and end up leaving with, a I don't know, like a, like a super bacteria for pneumonia or something like that. I know that's not how that works, but I don't care. It's the first thing that came to my mind. So, yeah, hospitals freak me out. And so now walking into the building, it just it feels like a hospital. It's like all white and clinic it's weird i don't like it anyway i don't even know where i was going with this but okay no no, 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 no. okay I'm, I'm trying to i'm writing this ship here because i was talking about something before i was talking about what i was going to do oh yeah so i'm going to take a pause on that real quick just the editing video so i'll, I'll just keep loading audio as regular I'll, I'll return to my regular scheduled programming on youtube and eventually i'll i'll catch everything back up again because i i mean i keep my word if i said i'm going to do it i'm going to do it it's just going to take me longer than expected because I, I mean, I'm sorry. Comic Con is a big opportunity, and I'm going to take it. So, I also I got to watch a lot of TV. It's 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 a thing, and uh, unfortunately, it, it's not something you can just make up. I wish you could. Honestly, I wish I could just make it up on the spot. But I, I, you need to at least know a little bit of the show. And I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping that I get a uh, okay. I won't talk too much about it because next week there's there's a lot to talk about Comic Con stuff. So I'll just save all that for next week. And and right now, let's just... Let's continue with the Game of Thrones rewrite. Alright, so... Continuing with the Game of Thrones rewrite, I usually do a quick recap of the things that happened. But last episode was super short. And I'm not going to go all the way back to what everybody's doing. Especially because a lot of those characters aren't really relevant right now. But basically what I talked about last time is... Cersei, she's trying to manipulate some of the Lords of the Reach into joining her side because Daenerys, Daenerys landed, her army landed in Westeros, but it's a huge clusterfuck because everybody hates each other. Now, a lot of people have been asking, dude, what's Tyrion doing? What's Tyrion doing? What's Tyrion doing? Well, uh, the reason why I haven't really talked about Tyrion, it's because he's busy doing the work of the Hand, which is coordinating, coordinating the transportation of his army, making sure the Marines set up nice and good for Dyer Naharis, making sure that he has a crew over there to, to run the city, making sure, because transporting 100,000 Dothraki plus Unsullied and, and making sure that things work together, that needs a lot of coordination. And uh, Daenerys is no bueno for that. So Tyrion has to make sure that all of those things are functioning. So he's busy working elsewhere. He's actually doing his fucking job. He's not trying to become the master of war here okay he's actually trying to coordinate stuff the master of war for daenerys's camp would actually be gray worm you know the commander of the unsullied forces she'd also have a few commanders from the dothraki she'd also have a few commanders from the soldiers of dorne she'd also have a few commanders from the reach and she would have euron Greyjoy, who is her fiance at this point and the commander well the the king of the iron islands leader of the iron fleet and the best person for naval warfare. So those are the dudes who are actually running the army. Those are the dudes who are going to be... Ultimately, the decision will probably fall on her. But they're the ones who are trying to make a plan. And again, none of these dudes like each other. Nobody there likes each other. And Tyrion, 
since if they if none of them like each other, they all hate Tyrion because <laughs> he's a Lannister. So Tyrion is keeping himself busy, uh, just making sure that all everything is in order, all the coordinating for the transportation, all that stuff is taking place flawlessly, and he's good at it. Tyrion is actually pretty good at it. But okay, so that's kind of where everybody is. So as I mentioned last episode, Cersei was trying really hard to make Randall Tarly uh, switch to her side. Now, for those of you who don't remember, Randall Randall Tarly is Sam Tarly's father. Sam Tarly is the fat guy from The Night's Watch. You know, John's best friend, the fat guy. Anyway, his dad. His dad is considered the best living commander in the Seven Kingdoms at this point. At this point, he's the best commander. He actually defeated Robert Baratheon on the field. He's probably, he's, I think he's the only man who defeated Robert Baratheon on the field. And so, Randall Tarly, uh, Cersei's trying her best to convince Randall Tarly to join her side. Because she knows that the Reach, most of the Lords of the Reach, do not, I repeat, do not agree with uh, Targaryen Queen bringing over 100,000 Dothraki. They do not want the Dothraki in Westeros. It would be a nightmare for them. And since uh, the Reach is actually pretty rich and they have a, a lot of food, they know that they'd be prime. They'd be the prime targets for the Dothraki, so they do not want them in Westeros. So the person who got Daenerys' army together was Varys. Through his spy network, through his diplomatic work, he's the one that actually managed to bring everybody together, and he's trying his best to keep everybody together. However, in that particular moment, he is not there, because he believes that, okay, Daenerys has to win them over somehow. In the meantime, I need to go to complete my next task. His next task is to con- to gain Storm's End. Now, for those of you who don't know, Storm's End is the castle, it was the house of the Baratheons. No Baratheons are left alive right now. And so it's it's the main castle. It's the biggest fortress in the Stormlands, which are right now Daenerys' army. They're in Dorne. North of Dorne is the Stormlands. And north of the Stormlands are the are the King's are the Crownlands, which is where King's Landing is and all of that. So if they're strategically starting to move north, getting Storm's End would be a huge win for them. So Varys is going to try to diplomatically win Storm's End because it's a hard sell. But he's going to try to make it because he's hoping that the this the the Baratheon hate because right now the person who's holding uh the person who's holding Storm's End is the Castellan of the Baratheons, which means that he's a man who's loyal to Baratheons. However, the Baratheons aren't there, so. There's really no reason for him to stay there other than his hate for the Lannisters and refusing to lose at at this point. So Varys is going to try to persuade him. At the same time as Varys goes to Storm's End, Littlefinger, Davos, Theon, and, and Gendry, they're on their way to Storm's End as well. Because Littlefinger promised Storm's End to Cersei in exchange for A, peace, and B, access to Dragonstone so that they could mine Dragonglass so they can create weapons to take care of the Army of the Dead. So, that's where they're heading. And uh, also, uh, just before I, I get into those two, because they're they're about to meet. You know, uh, To me, I've always said that the two puppet masters in the Game of Thrones are Varys and Littlefinger. So, it was a travesty that they never had another scene together. So, they're, they're going to meet up in Storm's End. However, a lot of people have been asking about Sam and... Uh, and Jorah. So what happens to Sam is Sam would be just exactly uh, as it was on the show. He would be in the Citadel. But instead of hating it there, he would actually be loving it. Because he's around books all day. Yeah, he has to do a whole bunch of busy work and cleaning up potties and all that stuff. But he it's something that he already did back at Winterfell. He took care of Maester Aemon who couldn't, pretty, who couldn't really do anything. So it's normal stuff for him. And he gets to be around books all day and people who are knowledgeable. So it's really happy. And plus he has Gilly hidden in the city on the side. So he's kind of like a rebel because he's got a girl even though he's his, his vows as... <laughs> Maesters can't have women and Night's Watch brothers can't have women. But still he has one. So he's kind of he's kind of feeling like a rebel. But he's learning a whole bunch of stuff. He's great. He's He's enjoying his time at the Citadel greatly. And Jorah does show up at the Citadel as well. However, there's not really much they can do for him, so they, they're kind of trying to study him in a way. To They're like, okay, we can have you here, and we'll study you, but there's not much we can do. 
Sam hears that Jorah Mormont, the son of Jorah Mormont, showed up there. And so Sam decides to go talk with, with Jorah and tell him, like, hey, you know, have a heart-to-heart. You know, because he Sam was there where Gior. You, for those of you who don't remember, Gior Mormont was Gior Mormont's father, and he was the commander of the Night's Watch. And Sam was there when he died, so Sam would reach out to to Jora, and he would tell him about his father's death, and then they would talk about his father. So they would bond over that. So it would be Sam makes a new friend, and they bond all over the stuff that he's seen in the North and everything. He tells them all about. The adventures that he's had, the the meeting of the White Walkers, why he's there. So that that's what they'd be doing. Jorah would be learning all about what's been happening in the Night's Watch and the death of his father and how that everything came down. And uh, at the same time, Sam would be le- learning all about Daenerys. So it's kind of like the two worlds meeting, the world of ice and fire meeting together. Okay, that's what we would be happening with those two. Now, so th- let's go to the to the big one, to the big event. And I wish, I wish I could act this out, but I, I can't do that good of a Varys. And uh, my little finger is mainly mediocre. Yes, I find it highly enjoyable to do it, but uh, people tell me that I'm not that good. Yes, excuse me, Lady Santa. <laughs> I, I love that voice. That man's voice is hysterical. That that, that dude made an excellent job with Peter Baelish. Anyway, so. Varys shows up at Storm's End um, under, you know, like a diplomatic flag, and he's trying to convince the Castellan to give up Storm's End for Daenerys. And he's trying to offer him, him, offer him actually, you know, something good. He would not get Storm's End, because Storm's End is too big for just a nobody. But he would he's promising that none of the soldiers there would be hurt, none of the people, that they would be pardoned. And the Castellan doesn't really believe him because, like, dude... We're loyal to Baratheons. The Baratheons killed pretty much all the Targaryens. We don't think that this Targaryen queen is going to forgive us. And also, they've already heard of... Da- There's one thing that a lot of people forget. Daenerys has a very bad rap. She has a... I'm sorry, very bad rep. She has a really bad reputation, and it's rightfully earned. Because throughout the show, she has killed a whole bunch of people that she shouldn't. I'll give you the best example. She bought uh, her army of slaves, the Unsullied, and immediately killed... Uh, and the the deal she made is, all right, I'll give you one dragon, you give me all the Unsullied you have. That was the deal. They shook hands, they agreed, they made payment, and as soon as they made payment, Daenerys turned around and stabbed them in the back, basically. Well, she made Drogon set them on fire. But still, the point is, she, she set them on fire, and then she made the Unsullied kill them. Great play, Sure. Not smart politics. Not smart politics. And from that point on, anybody who ever met with her should have been like, you know what? Fuck you, bitch. You betray people. Like, I'm not going to make a deal with you. Ever. Why? Because you stab people in the back. If you want to go even back further than that, if you remember the House of the Undying, which is where Daenerys got the vision and everything. Oh, damn it. Stupid thing. All right. So where she got the vision of walking into a throne of ashes and all that stuff. Uh, most of you probably won't remember, but it's a thing. So there, what's what she do? She gets invited into somebody's house and into somebody's city, and pretty much sets the whole thing on fire, kills all the elders. Which, to be fair, they tried to kill her. I'll give you that. If you try to kill me, I'll kill you back. That's fair. That's fair. I'll forgive that one. But again, sets for a bad rep. You're leaving a town in freaking ashes, basically, and without its leadership, and they kind of all want to kill you. So that one's fair. The next one, not really that fair. Because you made a deal. You made a commitment. And also, there's a whole bunch of messengers that have shown up that she just kills <laughs> for no <laughs> for no reason. Well, that was more show Daenerys, and it's later season, so I'll forgive those. But it's still just, if it were me, and they tell me, oh, you have to go meet with Daenerys Targaryen, I'd be like, fuck that. Why? Because the bitch sets people on fire. She's crazy. Like, you can't trust her. Even if we make a deal, she'll turn around and stab us in the back. Why would she do that? Because she's done it before. Like, you want me to list off examples? Like, are you fucking kidding me? She's nuts. Anyway, the point is, Daenerys has kind of a bad rap. And uh, Varys is trying to convince the cast- the, tar- the the Baratheon Castellan that, yeah, that won't happen to you. You're cool. Like, uh, we'll make a deal. We'll, I'll make you disappear. You'll be safe. All you people will be safe. The Castellan ain't really going for it. 
And at that moment, that's when uh, Littlefinger, Davos... Uh, well, the reason why Littlefinger gets in through the door is because of Davos. So now it's starting to make sense why the hell he has Davos with him, right? So Davos, if you guys don't remember, the last king of the Baratheons, the last leader of the Baratheons was Stannis Baratheon, Robert Baratheon's brother. And the hand of the king to Stannis Baratheon was Davos Seaworth. So technically the next person still alive that should have any type of command of the Baratheons is Davos. So they show up. um, Varys kind of takes... (laughs) takes account of who he's dealing with. Like, he he, he kind of makes an assessment of who Littlefinger's with, and he realizes, fuck, I kind of lost this one. But still, he, he does his best. He does his best in a, in a bad situation. Varys is in a very, very uncomfortable spot that he kind of was forced into due to Daenerys' rash, Daenerys's rashness, also kind of her previous lack of action. So he's in an uncomfortable spot. He's trying his best to keep things together, but he sees that that he there's no way he's going to win this one. So instead, what he does is he takes that opportunity to try to get as much information on Littlefinger as he can. Stop doing that. Sorry, it's I I can't do anything about that thing. Anyway, so he tries to do his best to get as much information as he can from Littlefinger. So as the uh, the, the people who are staying there to talk are Gendry. Davos and Littlefinger, they're going to speak with the Castellan. Varys kind of like sneaks off and he tries to get information from his soldiers and from Theon. So we get some Theon conversations with Varys. And the thing is, Theon is not exactly sure whose side he's on because he wants to kind of be free and help his sister. But at the same time, he feels like he kind of owes us to the Stark. But at the same time, he doesn't really want to be with Littlefinger because Littlefinger is really shady. But at the same time, so far, Littlefinger's been fair to him, and he's the only reason he's alive. So Theon is kind of conflicted. He's in a conflicted situation, and so he's just... Varys is pumping him for information. Now, so what happens now with Littlefinger is pretty much this is the deal he gives the Castellan. He says, thanks to... Da- he says, all right, so either the Lannisters or the, the or Daenerys Targaryen are going to take this castle. That's one way or another, and... Both are going to end. It's going to be a battle one way or the other. So you need to choose whose side you want to be on. Now, right now, I have Davos Seaworth here with me. And I made a deal with who is technically the Hand of the King. So he's technically in, he should technically be in command here. But I'll, I'll leave the choice up to you. I also brought Gendry, Gendry Baratheon. Well, I'm sorry. I brought Gendry Rivers, who technically, by the way, for this, I'm going to switch his name to Gendry Storm. And I'll explain why. So the last name Rivers are for bastards who were born in King's Landing. However, if you're if you're the son of a lord and uh, let's say you're a lord of of the Vale and you had a kid somewhere else, it doesn't matter. You would still take the last name from where your father is. So if your father's from the Vale and you were born in the Riverlands, you wouldn't be called you wouldn't be called Rivers. You would I'm sorry. I said Rivers, I meant Waters, by the way. Sorry. I could already feel my my friend Hill just yelling at his. <laughs> I could hear him yelling at his freaking radio like it's not rivers, <laughs> it's waters. I'm sorry, I messed up. Jesus Christ. Anyway, <laughs> so his last name would be Stone. A, a a perfect example for this is Jon Snow. Now we're not exactly sure where Jon Snow was born, but he was definitely not born in the North. However. Since Ned Stark is the Lord of the North, that's why he took the name Snow. So, if we're being fair, Gendry would have to be the his his last name would have to be Storm because Robert Baratheon was Lord of the Stormlands. Although he was the king technically, so it probably would have been Waters. The point is, if you're trying to sell somebody, if you're Littlefinger and you're trying to sell somebody's bastard, you would use the last name that's most useful to you, which would be Storm. So Littlefinger says, all right, and here I have Gendry Storm, Robert Baratheon's bastard. And the the castle would have been like, what the fuck? (laughs) But Davos would be there to confirm. Davos would confirm, like, yes, this is actually Robert's son. Stannis had him at Dragonstone for a while, then we released him because he was the, the red... The red lady was going to sacrifice him, but he is, in fact, I testify, I, Davos Seaworth, testified that this is Robert Baratheon's bastard. 
So little finger sass. Okay. Cersei gave me the option to name the next Castellan of Storm's End. And you already it, and with your approval, I would name Gandry Bur- I would name Gandry Storm as the Castellan of Storm's End until a proper replacement or a proper lord lord of the Stormlands could be found or until he is named by Cersei, which he will try to influence as much as possible. So the castle kind of gets what Littlefinger's trying to do. He's trying to kind of trying to keep the castle in Baratheon hands, and uh, he knows that it's possible for them to legitimize Gendry at some point. However, the castle doesn't really understand what Littlefinger's end game is here. He doesn't. Nobody really understands what the end understands what the game, end game is, but he sees enough to understand. Okay, Davos is backing him up. They. They clearly think that this is the side that they should be on. That doesn't mean that they have to actively engage in military action because they can't. They don't have enough people in Storm's End. But allowing the Lannisters to have axes there to mount a defense is perfectly plausible. And it's fine. So they the the Castellan agrees to give up the castle to Lannister hands and uh, to the Castellan, which would be Gendry, Gendry Storm. So, Davos and Gendry would stay at Storm's End to kind of still run the castle on behalf of the Lannisters, but they would allow the Lannisters to come in and defend. They would allow them to access to the castle in order to, you know, maintain uh, a military, in order for it to be a relevant military position. So now, Daenerys, if she wants to go by the sea, she would have to first off cross, go through Storm's End, then Dragonstone then reach King's Landing, and if they want to go through land, they have to cross through pretty much, they still have to go through the Stormlands and Storm's End. So it would give them a more, it would give the Lannisters a way, way more advantageous military position. So, with that in mind, Varys was there. And uh, you think Varys is just going to walk away without any of that information? No. Varys, while Littlefinger's walking out, he applauds him, for his victory, because technically he just won, he just won one of the strongest and most important military precisions in the land without having to unsheathe his sword or any sword whatsoever. And he starts, you know, adding up the things that Littlefinger has won. He right now he has Storm's End. He is technically the Lord of the of the Riverlands. He is the Lord of Harrenhal. Well, I mean, protector, blah blah. He also has uh, his own puppet in the veil. He's technically in control of the veil. He has his puppet in 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 the north, which is Sansa. Well, not really necessarily his puppet, but also his agent. And he has the the heir of the Iron Islands right there next to him, L- little Theon Greyjoy. So it all starts adding up that there's a lot of kingdoms in the. In Littlefinger's pocket, and Varys is just starting to realize that holy shit, my arrival has been very, very busy while I was away. I need to step up my game. So Littlefinger walks out of Storm's End with a smirk. Well, I mean, they he could stay for a little while and then goes back to continue on his missions, or what he was doing. Uh, sends a whole bunch of letters throughout to report on the success, and Varys very quickly goes back to Dorne because this requires immediate attention. So, I'm going to leave there that there for now. I believe it's it's been enough. Uh, the encounter, I wish I could have actually gotten into it a little bit more, but I, there's no way I could do justice to the conversations between Littlefinger and Varys. I just couldn't. It's just, ah, it's too good. They're too good. And like I said, I can't do a great Varys. I can kind of do a Littlefinger because it's, it's kind of, Interesting. Oh, that was really bad. I I went Asian on that one. I'm sorry. But, uh, (laughs) excuse me, Lady Sansa. I'm a bit confused. (laughs) I love doing that one. I don't know why. That's one of my favorite lines ever. It's it's great. So, anyway, uh, next episode will continue. So, so far, I think I've explained where kind of everybody is. I've set them up. They've already started doing things. You can see things kind of start rolling into action. And next episode... We'll go back to the north. What the hell has John John Snow been doing this whole time? What the hell? Did 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 the Hound and and all the Brotherhood reach him? Did did the did the Blackfish? Did Bran figure out how to use his powers? We'll get into that more next week on the rewrite of Game of Thrones. And uh, 
And so that's it for today on that. For tomorrow, there was a whole bunch of news that came down. There was there's a new casting of Ariel. For <laughs> there's casting news for that. I just saw the teaser trailer for Mulan. There's a whole there's a few things that came down that are interesting, so I'll go through that. Unless something big comes out that I want to talk about, but I'll go through all that tomorrow on Super Diary News. So, as always, thank you for listening, and I'll see you again tomorrow.